what our service is this morning is divine service setting three without Holy Communion, starting on page 184 in the front of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins of God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who read us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto all of my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and thus to deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I heartily desire for them, and I sincerely repent of them, and I pray for your boundless mercy, and for the sake of all of you to submit our sufferings and death, and your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a more sinful being. About this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The psalm for the day is Psalm 54, found in the front part of the hymnal. We will pray Psalm 54 responsibly, half verse for half verse, and I will begin. O oh God, save me by your name. And vindicate me by your might. O oh God, hear my prayer. Give me your ears and words my mouth. For strangers have risen against me, ruthless men seek my life. They do not set God before themselves. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will return the evil to my enemies. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked and turned upon my enemies. Let us continue by singing the glory of Padre, as is found in the Gospel, page 186, in the front of the hymnal.
Ursula Graf, that is your Holy Spirit may, in all things, direct and govern our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let your laughter be turned to mourning 
and your joy to bloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will exalt you. This is the word of the Lord.
deny by anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is going to deliver into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand this, and were afraid to ask him. This is the gospel of the Lord. These are these words penned by St. Mark, the blessed evangelist, by the inspiration of the Spirit. Divine to me, this quotation is Jesus the teacher. There's a lot of different dynamics and aspects that go into teaching and to learning. First, there is the teacher with their own skill sets and their ability to teach. Then there is the material that's got to be presented in an interesting way and easy to comprehend. And then there is the student who's got to have their mind open to hearing and to learning. And when all this takes place, there is teaching and there is learning. As you and I look at our own lives, you and I know that by the grace of God, you and I have been richly blessed with some awesome teachers that had a positive impact on me and you. And perhaps maybe by the grace of God, before you and I are called home, we will also have other awesome teachers to teach us. But as you and I go through life, you and I will find there is always one teacher who will be the greatest. Always be one teacher who is the best. And that's our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This brings us to the Gospel lesson for today. In the Gospel lesson for today, we find Jesus, the teacher, along with his disciples and students. And they were making their way and walking down the road to Capernaum. And the disciples were way ahead, and Jesus was lagging back. And the Holy Spirit tells us that as the disciples were together amongst themselves, they began to argue amongst themselves as to which of them was the best. Which of them is the greatest. And you could bet that each one of them held up their own skill set and skills and talents and abilities, pointing out why they should be considered the best, why they should be considered the greatest. However, as you and I consider what's going on, we realize that as they compared themselves to each other, they fell into the sin of pride and arrogance and envy and jealousy. They finally got to Capernaum, and they finally went into the house, and Jesus the teacher was with them. And Jesus the teacher, he asked them then, so what were you guys talking about while you guys were on the road? <coughs> silence. Dead silence. Because every one of them knew that they had been wrong. Everyone knew that they had fallen into the sin of pride. But you can't fool Jesus, the Son of God. He is all knowing. Every thought, every word we speak, every deed that we do. He has the ability to look into all of our hearts and all of our minds and know exactly and precisely what is going on. Because he is all-knowing, Jesus through the disciples were arguing amongst themselves as to which was the best and which was the greatest. So now Jesus, he began to teach. And as he taught his disciples, as he taught his students, he taught them using the Socratic method, allowing them into his presence, allowing them to hear his voice and his words. And as Jesus the teacher taught, he taught in present general truths, specific Greek instructions that apply to all people, in all times, and all places, and there are no exceptions. And the teacher began. 
began to teach. You guys know, don't you, that if you want to be the best, if you want to be the greatest, if you want to be first of all, you've got to be last of all. You have to be a servant. And then Jesus, he took a little baby into his arms and he said, whoever receives a little baby like this, in my name receives me. In my name means having faith. Because even babies can have faith. There was a time when King David and Bathsheba had committed adultery and they gave birth to a son. The son was born eight days after the son was born. He was circumcised in name. When he was circumcised in name, he received the gift of saving faith. All of his sins forgiven. A new man that desired to want to live a God was in life and the promise of eternal salvation. A little after that, the baby boy died. The baby boy died because King David, the king of Israel, had committed adultery with Bathsheba. When that happened, King David said, I will go to be with him. What he meant was heaven and paradise because the baby had died in faith. But he could not come to me. Even babies can have faith. Which brings to mind some other thoughts that are floating around in Christianity. And the other thoughts go kind of this way. The gift of saving faith is connected to cognitive reasoning. And you got to have cognitive reasoning in order to have faith. But that is not true. Because cognitive reasoning is separate from faith. Faith is unique and distinct. Faith is created by the gospel. Faith claims to the gospel. And this is the gospel. That Jesus lived and died and rose again. So we can have forgiveness of sins and salvation. Cognitive thinking and reasoning is different. And it's affected by the sinful flesh. That's why we sometimes think things that are not right and that are wrong. Cognitive thinking is separate from faith. And the problem with this particular mindset that connects faith to cognitive reasoning is this. So what do you do with little babies that pass away when they are young? So what do you do with friends and relatives who are mentally handicapped? So what do you do with grandpa and grandma who get Alzheimer's disease and dementia? Too bad for you because you don't have enough cognitive reasoning? No. Because faith is separate and distinct from cognitive reasoning. So Jesus makes a big point in the gospel lesson for today. Whoever receives even a little baby in my name receives me. And he goes on to say, whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. And that would be the Heavenly Father. Because there is only one way to have the doors of heaven open. And that's by having faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior and Redeemer. There's only one way to get to the Heavenly Father. That's by having faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. So Jesus says plainly in John, in the Gospel of John, no one comes to the Father except through me. Including all the Muslims that reject Jesus as Lord and Savior. Including all the Buddhists that reject Jesus as being Lord and Savior. Including all the Jews that reject Jesus as being Lord and Savior. Whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. The Heavenly Father. So Jesus taught. And the disciples, the students, they learned. Now it comes down to you and to me. Now you and I are the disciples of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now we are his students. And he is our teacher. <coughs> the Holy Spirit points out in the text for today, the main problem is pride. St. Augustine, the great church father, goes on to tell us that pride is the root of all wrongdoing. 
Pride was a problem for Lucifer and the angels of heaven that rebelled against our God. And because they rebelled against our God, they were thrown out of heaven. And Lucifer became Satan, and the angels became the demons. Then the old evil Paul used pride against Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Go ahead, eat of the forbidden fruit. You too, to be just like God. Wherever you find a sinful flesh, you will always find pride. Wherever you find pride, you will also find a sinful flesh. Because the two are one. And nobody, nobody plays the pride card better than the old evil foe. He is a pro. He is an expert. And he will play both ends against the middle. And this is one end, as we are filled with envy and jealousy. You know, my life would be a lot better if I only had my neighbor's house, if I only had my neighbor's money, if I only had my neighbor's tractor and combines, if I only had my neighbor's cattle, if I only had my neighbor's land. If I only had my neighbors, whatever. And then we're no longer content. But God has provided for us. Here's the other side of the spectrum. This side of the spectrum leads to hypocrisy and being for a cynical. Oh Lord, I just want to thank you for making me the amazing person that I am. I just want to thank you for making me a Christian and loving you with all my heart, soul, and mind, and loving my neighbor as myself. And oh Lord, I really want to thank you for not making me like my neighbor. Lord, have you seen my neighbor? What a manifested sinner they are. Man, oh, peace. They are a piece of work. They're the very dregs of society. Lord, just look at the word sinner in the dictionary, you will see their picture to define the word sinner. So, Lord, I just want to thank you that you have not made me to be like my neighbor. Pride. Wherever you find the sinful flesh, you will find pride. Wherever you find pride, you will find the sinful flesh. And here's the deal. We all have the sinful flesh. Every one of us, including me. Because we have this in the flesh, every one of us, including me, we all fall short. So we look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who does not fall short. The Apostle St. James, in the Epistle lesson for the day, reminds us of the opposite of pride and arrogance his humbleness and humility. So as you and I consider our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we find, even from the get-go, all this humbleness and all this humility. So there's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Savior, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. But he's not born to a king. He's not born to a queen. He's born to a lowly Jewish carpenter and a lowly Jewish man. He's not born in a capital city like Rome or Jerusalem, outside of a little town called Bethlehem. He's not born in a palace. He's born in a stable. And now consider the passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and all the humbleness, and all the humility. Consider our Savior, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The crown of thorns that was jammed upon his head, there was blood down in his face. Consider the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who was whipped and beaten to the point of not even being able to be recognized as a man. So he was being punished for your sins and my sins and the sins of the people of the world. There he is, our Savior, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, dying by death and crucifixion on a cross, like a common criminal, with a thief on the left and a thief on the right. Yeah. Fulfilling the words of being great in the gospel of the day that he shared with disciples. He must go to Jerusalem one last time. 
He must be had on the hands of wicked men. They will kill him. He was raised again on the third day. Fulfilling the words that he spoke to the disciples, do you want to be the first? Do you want to be the best of all? Then you better be the last. You better be servant of all. So that Jesus went to the cross, when the cross being the Lamb of God, takes away the sins of the world. He carried on his back all the sins of all the people in all the world. By all thought, by all word, by all deed. All of my sins, all of your sins, all the sins committed against us. Paying for all those sins with all of his life, and all of his body, and all of his blood. Paying a double portion of what was required. A double portion of what was needed. So all of our sins are forgiven. Forgotten. And no more. And you and I can have life. And salvation. So when you and I look at the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we can see the greatest, the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. So you and I consider the cross and the tomb you and I can see the best teacher that we will ever have, now and even for all of eternity. He doesn't only say it, he does it. His life, and his death, his resurrection. Now it comes down to you, and now it comes down to me. Our entire life, you and I will always and only be students. With Jesus being our greatest and our best teacher. Sometimes he teaches us the same way that he taught the disciples in the gospel lesson for a day. By allowing us to be in his presence. To hear his voice and to hear his words. Jesus is the living word of God. The word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light into our path. The word of God is given to us for instruction, correction, and direction. So we can keep on going down the right way and the right path not the wrong way, in the wrong path. So too, Jesus, the teacher, teaches us in this other way, allowing situations and circumstances to come into your life and to my life. As he teaches in this way, St. James, the Blessed Apostle, reminds us in the Epistle lesson for today, there's a certain order that God follows in his kingdom. You've got to be brought down in Christ in order to be raised up in Christ. You've got to die in Christ in order to be resurrected in Christ. So too it is our teacher who teaches us to remember that he is the vine, and you and I are the branches. The Heavenly Father is the gardener, and he promises that every branch that produces fruit will be trimmed and pruned and cut back. Not because God is punishing us, he is angry with us for hurting us, so you and I can produce bigger and even better fruit. It is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who permits bad things to happen to you, to you and me as good people. So you take the bad and change it into good. So you can be glorified. We can give to him all thanks and praise. He's the one who allows sadness and sorrow and tears and weeping to become a part of our life so that he can change it to joy and happiness and laughter. He's the one who allows us to see that we are weak, so that he is strong and he is our strength. He is the one who allows the darkness to become a part of your life and my life, ever reminding you and me that he is the light of the world. Light is always more powerful than darkness. Darkness is always going to be there can or never be any darkness in this life of the world so dark that his light and his love cannot overpower it and cannot overcome it. You and I will always be his disciples. You and I will always be his students. And Jesus is and will always be our best and our greatest teacher. My Jesus, your Jesus, the one we can trust in, the one we can count on, depend upon, no matter what, today, tomorrow, and before all of eternity. In Jesus' name, amen.
for your goodness toward them. To be grateful you have mercy given unto them, the strength of friends, the relevance of pleasure of all, your gospel promise of peace and forgiveness. Dear Lord, as these your servants are the capacity of one year and the beginning of a new year, promise of mercy upon them through your word and sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Sure. Lord of life, that Howard Rumpy's granddaughter, Leola Alberts, Kaylin Dan Howard, Ireland Bradley, Pauline Frex, by grace you receive healing and strength of you. That they with us might be thankful in sickness and health, and that you might grant the strength to accept your will for their generally care lives, visit them in their afflictions, and in them through your word and the promise of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. All powerful Creator, we bring you blessing here to make it fruitful. Bring forth in abundance whatever is needed to this part of our lives. Possibly we employ the work of farmers, grant us a proper weather of sunshine and rain, may both have a seed dying and a gathering of the fruits of the earth, thus proclaiming your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Your hands, O oh Lord, we would all from we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord, we your kingdom, we trust and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven.